Hey guys, Hens here. I recently watched a video by Coconut RTS in which he talked about the dropping player numbers of Dead by Daylight and why he thought this was happening. It got me thinking, how could DVD become better? I made a list of changes that I think would put the game in a better spot and maybe out of the slump that is currently in. Let's first talk about skill-based matchmaking. Matchmaking has become increasingly less accurate, matching up against seemingly new players, especially survivors, fairly often. I have an idea on why that is, but more on that later. I think it's fairly clear that the system sucks at grasping actual skill. In my opinion, the win condition, according to the system, are very misplaced on both sides and impact the game negatively. For killers, skill-based matchmaking is actually more of a kill-based matchmaking. There's barely any reason to spread out the hooks, while most people would probably agree that spreading the pressure amongst survivors leads to more interesting gameplay, it really does not get rewarded at all by this system. It is incredibly easy to play Baba and camp everyone to death with perks that play into this playstyle and 3 and 4k 95% of your matches. According to the system, you are a top tier killer if you do that. To prove this, I went ahead and played 10 Baba matches, literally just camping the first two people to death without pressuring any generators at any point. Only two people managed to escape through the doors, and one of them was actually Speed Hacker. <laughs> is this really the skilled Dead by Daylight gameplay? This gameplay loop is rather boring and repetitive, but this system totally encourages it. Getting a 9 hook 1k is honestly way harder than what I did in those Baba matches, and it impresses me way more personally. To be perfectly honest, it's even worse for survivors. The error in the win condition is so obvious to me, it hurts me a little. Survivors are playing in a team of four. Seeing Ru out of those four escape is very flawed, since it will always reward the passive players more than the aggressive ones. Even though the aggressive ones arguably do more skilled things like taking chase, getting unhooks, they take more aggro and allow passive players to do their objective, while being way more likely to die at the end. You can run a Baba for 5 gens and get camped at the end and lose MMR even though you arguably did something that is insanely hard to do and you allowed your whole team space to do their objective and win. The easy fix is to reward every survivor the same amount of MMR based on the outcome. If it's a 0 to 1 man escape, every survivor should lose MMR, while a 3 to 4 man escape, every survivor should gain MMR. When this system first released, I honestly thought this is how it worked, since you are rewarding each individual differently in a team game. I don't know any other team game or sport that works this way. The fact that lead game designer Patrick compares the system to hockey and doesn't see the difference makes me think he doesn't see how wrong this is. Even though I have never watched hockey in my life, I'm pretty sure the whole team wins and loses together in that game. I can see the outcome of this every day when I play killer. I see very inexperienced passive players reach the top of the MMR and get into my games. They screw over their teams, but their own survival rate is decent. The system punishes team play and rewards selfish plays. All in all, a horrible system that encourages a boring playstyle from both sides. Dead by Daylight has a huge cheater problem right now. I get multiple cheaters every single day. BHVR gave Dead by Daylight away literally for free on Epic Store and supplied cheaters with infinite accounts without being able to do anything against them. There is hardly any purpose in reporting them as there's an infinite supply of cheap accounts and even then it takes them days to respond to the support tickets and getting them met. Reporting is so painfully complicated it hurts, and it takes longer than it takes them to make the account they are playing on. They are not doing anything to help anyone, streamers get targeted and held hostage for hours, simple lag switches can softlock killers for the rest of the game. I'm not the only one who wants transparency, the amount of cheaters in DVD has drastically increased and I don't see the devs acknowledging this at all and putting effort towards solving or helping the situation. The high MMR meta in Dead by Daylight has been incredibly stale on both sides for a while and there's nothing to mix this up at all. For survivors it boils down to dead heart, anti-tunneling or slugging perks, prove thyself, circle of healing and medkits. 
In my opinions, everything mentioned besides the anti-tunneling perks deserve a nerf for different reasons. Let's talk about them one by one. While Deadheart keeps Blight and Nurse somewhat in check, it is way too strong against low tier killers. The validation change definitely helped to make it feel more fair for the survivors, but it also made it a bit too good in my opinion. The ability to dodge a hit and use it for distance is way too much. In my opinion, you should slow down after the dash to make distance neutral. You can still dodge a hit and it would still be strong against top tier killers like Nurse and Blight, but not be as oppressive against low tier M1 killers like Myers and Trapper. Prove thyself. In my opinion, Proof is an overtuned puck. It does way too much for free. One Proof in a survivor team is a game changer and can make a 3 gen scenario a mere inconvenience. There's a reason why every single DBD tournament is banning this puck. Making the effect only work for the survivor using Proof could be an idea to tone it down. Circle of Healing. In my opinion, an incredibly toxic perk by design. For any other boon perk, the killer needs to be near the boon for you to generate value out of them. This perk just limits the macro options for the killer. One circle of healing shuts 3 genning or playing a hit and run playstyle down completely and can counter some killers like Legion, Hack or Twins outright. This perk makes DBD worse and there's no reason to have it in the game in my opinion. Also, totems were not placed with boons in mind. There are certain boon spots that are ridiculously hard to remove for the killer, like Ironworks of Misery upstairs or RPD Library. These spots should either get removed, or the killer should get the option to destroy those totems when snuffing them. The killer diversity has taken a big hit with skill-based matchmaking. Blight has totally taken over the game. The fact that no one plays the latest killer artist really does not help that at all. Medkits and boons have severely limited killer options when it comes to pressuring survivors. I think this is largely to blame for the tunnel meta with slowdown perks that we have right now. Getting one survivor out ASAP is the best way to win as a killer. Making other playstyle options more viable again could really help this. I would also look at some add-ons that I think are way too strong like Compound 33 for Blight or Mother Daughtering for Spirit. You could also adjust a lot of gen regression perks. Problem with killer balance is that if you balance it for blight, the rest of the roster gets left behind. It is really not easy. Perks to look at would be pop and scourge pain resonance in my opinion. Alternatively, you could nerf the only two S tier killers, nurse and blight, to put them more in line with the rest of the killers. I don't think such a change would be very popular amongst the community though. Map design. I think the map design of the recently released maps have been absolutely awful in terms of playability. They are obviously made with looks in mind. Some of them feel so bad to play that it's hard to take. If you look at the maps that they released or reworked in the last two years, you see we have some of the maps that I think are the worst in the game. I can kind of understand that RPD is staying close to the original. But did we really need the wall building? There are a lot of players who literally refuse to play it and would rather wait out the 5 minutes than play a match on the map. Is that okay? Cowshed and Preschool are ridiculously one-sided maps and have been reworked in the last 2 years. Why are they designed like this? The new map, Eerie of the Crows, is another ridiculous map that is way too big with pallets that are way too safe. The map is definitely pretty to look at, but incredibly frustrating to play for half the killers in the roster. Playing Trapper on this map is probably the worst killer experience I can imagine in DBD. There's absolutely nothing to hide your traps with super safe loops that you cannot all play. Why are they releasing maps like this? They might be fine on the lower level, but in an environment where everyone is experienced, it feels awful to play. I really hope that BHVR get better at communicating to the community and improve the game at a faster pace than they have been. What do you guys think about my suggested changes? Please give me your opinions in the comments. See you guys next time.